Hey party people, Panda Brady here, and I just finished watching Men in Black International. Um, yeah, so uh, where to begin? First off, now that I've said where to begin, um, it was good. It was good. It was much better than I thought it'd be, especially from all the reviews I've been seeing. I do have a few problems with it, how they kind of reverse the roles of the senior agent being the one that's n more, you know, happy-go-lucky, trigger-happy uh, kind of character, and the new person is the very strict by-the-rules person, but then they also kind of don't do that. Um, it, it's more like Will Smith from MIB3 teaming up with Will Smith from MIB1, who also sometimes acts like the the young version of K. It's, it's, it's really weird. I don't think it works as well. I really don't. Um, I'm not going to bother about the CG, because... It's you're going to have CG a lot in a movie like Men in Black, and unfortunately, when the budget's the way it is, it's not always going to show up the best. I think the best version of the CG um, in the movie is with these two aliens that are like cosmic entities, kind of weirdly. It's it, it's weird. It's weird. Um, <clears throat> so. We start off with, we start off with H and T, who are the uh, international people, um, at the Eiffel Tower, where apparently that is a some kind of portal, like warp portal gateway. It's weird. Um, but there's a new alien menace called the Hive that's trying to come through. Um, and they stop it, and then it does a jump back to 20 years earlier, um, so that you meet the other character, Agent M, who is the main character, and no, it's not Michael Jackson, sorry, uh, <sighs> making myself laugh, um, anyways, so she, Molly, uh, runs into a little alien thing that has, like, rainbow fur for some reason. Um, and, uh, her parents get neuralized, but because the agents think that she's asleep, uh, they don't go into the house to deneuralize her. So, she meets the little colorful monkey person and lets him go, and he's like, Molly, and then he says something in his alien language, I forget what it is, but, uh, it comes into play much later. Um, <clears throat> so then we jump to 20 years later, she wants to be part of the FBI or the CIA, some kind of government agency, because she thinks they're the way to get into the Men in Black, which she doesn't know that's what they're called yet, but, uh, she does all this studying, but whenever she brings up who she wants to work for, that being the men in black, they're like, you're delusional, we're not going to do that. So, she hacked into the Hubble telescope and saw a comet uh, coming to Earth that suddenly changed trajectory and landed in New York, and luckily the men in black were there to seal off the landing, but uh, she goes to figure it out and she's like wait there's nothing here and then she accidentally scares some birds into this camouflage field that they have now which would be really useful in the old movies but um she sees that and then she's like huh sticks her face in and she sees it and she's like oh, aliens are real i must i must go so because she knows that they're all in suits and ties and black suit, white undershirt, 
she runs back to her cab that she had just taken and starts taking off her jacket and stuff. And she's like, follow that car. And the guy's like, okay, lady. So she walks into the doors of MIB. And, of course, there's the old guy with his newspaper not looking up from it sitting there. And um, the pug from the first two movies, Frank, he's sitting there with the guy. And because she overheard the agents earlier, uh, she walks in and she's like, did they bring in the so-and-so earlier? And he's like, yep, rookie hour, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they, they, go, they have a little back and forth. She gets into the elevator, starts going down, and Frank looks at him and goes, so are you going to call it in? And he's like, go black. <laughs> Still not looking up from his newspaper. So she starts going down, she sees the aliens, and she's like, Yes, I was right! Oh no, they locked her down. So now she's being interviewed by Agent O, who you may remember from the third movie. Um, but, uh, yeah, and she's like, No, I found you, so you should make me one of your people. One sec. I need to put a coaster down for my drink. There we go. And she's like, all right, fine. Since you flattered me during that interaction, I'm going to give you a probationary period to see if you're what we want. And so she accepts her uh, to the Men in Black, and her first assignment is to go to London uh, to the Air National place and work uh, there. There she meets H, uh, Auntie, and uh, she gets herself put into the uh, assignment with H where he says that he has to take this noble alien person on a uh, clubbing basically <laughs> um, and uh, while there the uh, uh, the aliens like no stop seriously we can't be fooling around I have something very serious to tell you He's like, oh yeah, no, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, we can... Meanwhile, there are these, the two cosmic alien things I was telling you about earlier, have taken the image of some guy from Marrakesh, and they have their own clothes, and uh, they show up at the club because they went to assassinate the guy, which apparently they spoke with some alien queen, which is literally a queen piece, uh, to get some kind of weapon to assassinate the guy. It was, it was weird. Really don't understand how everything went the way it did. But anyways, they show up at the club. Nobody knows about them yet. And they shoot this tiny little dart into the guy's neck. He gets really sick. Goes. Uh, they put him in a car. And then as they're leaving, the car gets blown up and attacked by the two cosmic guys uh h and uh m molly uh are there and they start attacking the cosmic guys with different weapons and because of their alienness whatever it is they don't die or get injured when they're shot which was kind of weird it, it was more of a it was more of an inconvenience for them, and half the time it didn't even matter because they acted like Agent Smith and were just like, "Boom, yeah, you can't hit us, you can't hit us." But um, yeah. So eventually, they disappear right as the other Men in Black agents show to put the scene on lockdown, uh, and M has spoken with the dying alien noble and he's like I can't trust H anymore here take this little thing don't let anybody in MIB have it and she's like okay fine I will they get talked to by T who's like oh by the way he's played by Liam Neeson he's like they want your heads on a platter because you two got the noble killed and it was your responsibility for him to be safe and they're like we're sorry, we're so you, you can't, I should terminate you both. What? 
Terminate. Deneuralize and let you go. Oh, wait, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Why not? Because you'll never know the truth that there's a mole in our society. And he's like, you have a good point. Obviously. Obviously, because only us four and a handful of agents knew that that guy was going to be here on Earth. There must be a mole. And, oh, uh, it, it's so obvious who the mole is. They try to make it not obvious, but it's a movie with Liam Neeson in it. If he's not, if he's not the main character, he's going to be the surprise villain. I'm sorry, that's how Liam Neeson works. So, uh, they are basically grounded on the mission. Uh, and this other agent, C, who has this rivalry with H, and he even, like, wants H to be terminated. Uh, he's the one that suggests it, but he gets the little dagger, and he's supposed to analyze it with M working with him. H shows up, does this little lie where it's like, no, it's my... <laughs> T wants me on it, and everything to go through me, and he takes the dagger, and C's just like, what? Uh, oh, oh, okay... I guess. So, C, uh, sorry, H and Molly, or H and M, uh, end up going to Marrakesh because he's like, oh, I know a place where this stuff is made, this poison. It's some kind of drug that only this person would have in Marrakesh. And, uh, so, they go, they meet this alien with like a beard alien because his chin is like super small so he's got this big full beard alien that hangs on him and he's working on a motorcycle of some sort some alien motorcycle and I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing um, and H is like hey don't let other people see that you know you're an alien he's like oh yeah sorry won't happen again and then after they leave he's like beard alien call Rizzo and because Rizzo apparently was a love interest of H, but is also an arms dealer for some reason. Um, but uh, they go into the place with the little pawn or er, the chess queen, and the only one that survived was a pawn. And he's like, Oh, I'm going to kill myself. I have no queen. Nobody likes me. You want to come with us? Oh, well, if you insist. So he ends up being their little partner. Basically the Frank of this movie. Um, there is a scorpion. Yay. I'll deal with it later. Um, so, um... As they're leaving, they're like, Oh no, the other agents are here to get uh, to capture us again because we're doing this not with any jurisdiction. Uh, and so they split up and eventually H gets the motorcycle from the alien and the alien's like, Wait, here, don't forget that. There's... It's hot outside. You'll want some water. And he's like, oh, thank you. That's, that's very kind of you. He's got this thermos of water. Takes off in the bike. Uh, grabs M. There's a part where, like, basically a blockade of agents is there. They hit a hyperdrive button. Zip off into the middle of the desert. And apparently because they did that, that triggers the little uh, weapon thing that she was given. Uh, that M was given. Turns out it's a giant gun with a miniaturized star inside of it. And at .01% power, it blows a huge hole in the desert that turns it into a canyon, basically. Um, then it turns out that uh, the beard alien was inside of the flask, pops out, steals the weapon, and takes off. Um... Which, you know, unfortunate. Uh, so they end up, M and H are working on the motorcycle because it broke when they did the hyperdrive. 
uh, they fix it overnight after, you know, getting to know each other a little bit. Because at first they're all like, can't believe you let that happen. I can't believe you let that happen. Well, you know this all, this, 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 this. Oh yeah, well this, 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 this. You know what? I like you. I like you too. Let's go, partner. So, they go to Rizzo's place because, or Rizza, however you say it. Uh, because apparently she's the one that was uh, that the beard alien was giving the weapon to, and she sees H and she's like, "Oh, my ex is here. I wonder what he wants." Oh, hello there, honey. I have this little thing, which is the pawn, which they call Pawnee, but then they call Steve at one point, and then they start calling him Pawnee again. I have this thing for a gift for you. I want to get back together. Oh, that's sweet, but no. I just got a big weapon, and I know you work with the men in black, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, boys, take him back to the boat, and I'll just keep both of these. Yay. So he ends up getting taken back to the boat. He knocks out the two guards. The big blue guard alien that's with them leaves him alone for a little bit. Meanwhile, M is trying to scale the island to secretly steal back the little weapon. Um, and basically, H finds the defense control panel, turns it off. She gets in to the uh, place after Pawn escapes from his little jar. And uh, he's trying to steal back the box, uh, the, the weapon. They call it a box. Uh, and get it back to M, but meanwhile, M is trying to get in. Ah. Uh, and uh, they get into a fight, Rizza versus M, and H versus the big blue guy. Um, and they, they have a shout out to Thor, of all things, where he, uh, H gets like, severely beaten up, thrown to the ground, he sees a hammer, he picks it up, he's holding it like he does with Thor, and he's like, now the tables have turned, yeah, and the blue alien's just like, get that out of here, he's like, that is an incredible catch, um, so M gets the little, uh, weapon back, and she's about to leave, but then blue guy comes in, and he's got a gun to H, and she's like, wait, no, no, don't, don't kill him. And, uh, they're like, give us the box or we'll have to kill you. And then, she, um, who was, it? I think it was H or it might've been Riza mentions that the big blue guy is the kind of alien that, um, uh, uh, that M knew when she, at the beginning of the movie. And she was like, wait, 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 I know one. <laughs> what yeah he told me this specific thing and the bl big blue guy with the gun is like dude it's molly oh yeah we're the best of friends i'm paraphrasing of course hey let them go oh, oh, oh sorry i've got all three hands up and yeah the the rizza woman has three three arms for some reason but yeah they they end up getting away they stroll down the island because they're like ah oh, yes finally we got away with it um, then the cosmic aliens show back up, and they're like, give us the weapon, and then they activate the weapon, and they're like, no, we'll do anything to protect our planet, and they're like, so will we, and then they get zapped by the other MIB agents that just show up out of nowhere, and they're like, good job, you two, you got the weapon back, now we can put it safely away, and, like, they forgot about the whole mole thing, but they didn't. As it turns out, once they get back and they're hailed as heroes, oh, hey, uh, remember how he said how those two aliens said that that they would protect their planet? Yeah, you, that was weird, right? Yeah, but we were told they were hive, and hive are supposed to be bad. Yeah, there was the whole DNA thing, right? Yeah, that. Let's look in the files again. Oh, the files are deleted. Oh, snap. So they go, check to see where the weapon is, the weapon's gone, and they're like, Oh no, T is the bad guy. T is the mole. 
And then T's at the Eiffel Tower and he's like, Oh, good job you two, you always were bright. But guess what? I'm opening this portal. And I'm a big scary monster now. And so they have this small little fight. M gets knocked into the portal at one point. Pawnee goes into the portal and saves her by shooting a little grappling hook on her, shooting a grappling hook back to the Eiffel Tower, and then using his jetpack in that, takes her back to the Eiffel Tower. She happens to knock the box out of the alien's hand. She act turns it on, activates it at full power, shoots the alien, splatters everywhere, goes through the portal, destroys the hive, and they're all like, yeah, they did it, woohoo! Um, and then afterwards, they come out and they're like, Oh, hey, it's O. Yes, it's me. See, H, you're being turned into the, uh, you're the head of the company now. What? Probationary. Ah. Uh. And M, uh, good job. You're a full agent now. Oh, awesome. Yes, clear out your desk here. I want you back in New York on Monday. Oh, thank you. I'll do that. Oh, but first, can I do something with him? Ah, yeah, fine. It'll, it'll, it'll be good for the credits. She shows back up, and they do a little turn the car into a plane and fly towards the camera. And that's the end. No after credit scene. But, it was a good movie. Not, not super good. At least worth a matinee. Um, but it's definitely better than pretty much everybody on the internet is letting on. I'd say, if I had to place it, it's better than the third MIB movie, which I, I absolutely, well, not absolutely, I disliked. I disliked because it, there wasn't a lot going on with it, but this one probably same level as the second one. I still think the first one's the best, but the second one has the best world building. Um, so yeah, and that's basically my take. So, um, I give it a deneuralizer out of 10. I don't know. I'm just vamping now. <laughs> so, um, if you liked what you saw, Go ahead and like and share if you enjoy. Subscribe to part of the Pan Party because there ain't no part like a Pan Party because Pan Party don't stop. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to party on and party hard. Later.